Hello everybody, I'm Blaze and Rebecca, and welcome back to Shinrai Broken Beyond Despair. Uh, uh, right now we were just having an interesting road trip going on here. And now we're at uh, where we need to be. Which is the hotel, res it was a vac vacation resort. And there seems to be quite cold out. Quite chilly was quite an understatement. The inside of the freezer was a summer paradise compared to this. That's gotta be quite cold. <laughs> As my head sunk between my shoulders, my arms automatically slung themselves tightly around my thin body, trying to keep me warm. A well meant, yet utterly futile gesture. If only I could have brought my jacket with me. Well, you probably should have. But thanks for someone, someone who had threw, who had thrown this out before I'd been able to grab it. I was now experiencing what it felt like when the blood in your veins slowly begins to freeze. Mr. Rikatori was shivering as one puffed out tiny steam-like st steam -like clouds fogging up his glasses. Other than that, however, he didn't seem too affected by the low temperature. Bar Chen, on the other hand, I could literally see the warmth getting sucked out of her cheeks. The cold's icy touch seemed to have slapped her even harder than me. She looked wide awake now. <laughs> I guess that cold woke her up. Alright, my little beauties, here you go. Mr. Arkadori heaved our bags out of the car trunk and handed them over to us. While doing so, he took the chance to recite the usual things parents like to preach their children in a moment like this. Don't do anything stupid. Don't forget to call every hour. No alcohol. No drugs. No- Oh dear god. And so on and so forth. <laughs> so much for his, I know I can trust you just a couple minutes ago. Anyway, he proposed once again to stay and assure us and we wouldn't even notice his presence, but Bartran had only given him an annoyed glance and quickly, gr quickly dropped the idea. A little disappointed, but still smiling, he winked at us one final time before jumping back into his car and leaving the parking area just a moment later. Bye! We waited until the red back black light backlights were swallowed by the darkness, just to make sure he was actually driving home and not secretly trying to stay. Once we had confirmed he was gone, Baruchan and I nodded at each other, turned around, and made haste for the resort. None of one of us wanted to spend a second longer than needed now this cruel in this cruel cold. Okay, I guess we're walking in. We headed towards the dim lights of a pair of old stone lanterns, which guided our way. There were a bunch of more of them guarding a long staircase that climbed up a rather steep hill. God damn it! <laughs> Looking at its top was the resort, an old-fashioned Japanese-style three-story building surrounded by a dense black forest. <clears throat> Seeing this, I couldn't help but think it would have been the ideal backdrop for a horror movie. <laughs> or a horror game? Eh? This might possibly be horror. <coughs> no wonder Ray had chosen this of all places as a saying for her little party. <coughs> Guess we're going up now. Walking. <coughs> Following the lantern lights, we push, rush past countlessly eerie shaped trees until we eventually reach the huge one front doors of the resort. There was a big sign hanging above them. The fading letters on it read, Miyamoto Mountain Resort. After just a quick glance at it, I slammed my thumb on the small metal button to ring the bell. <coughs> the typical ding dong. It didn't take long for the bulky doors to open with a deep wind groan. Okay, not all I expected, but okay. Ooh, okay. This looks nice. <clears throat> Dots. Nothing. A little bewildered, Baruchan and I stared at the pitch black entrance before us. There was not the faintest source of light, light visible inside, nor any sign of anyone to greet us. <clears throat> Slowly we turned our heads and looked at each other, dumbfounded. What was going on? I won't expect Ray to jump right at us, or at least Runa to show up and welcome us, but... Wait. Before I was able to wonder about this oddity anymore, I suddenly heard something. 
Um, footsteps? Yes, I can hear slow, heavy footsteps echoing from inside. Barachan seemed a little nervous and moved close to me, almost hiding behind my back. We continued gazing into the thick mist of darkness and blackness ahead of us, listening closely to the sound of those footsteps. As they drew nearer, we could eventually make out a shadowy silhouette moving towards us. And just a couple moments later... Um, hello, um... <clears throat> what the fuck? Um... Uh, R Rain? Is that you? Uh, um... <laughs> what the hell? Rain? <sighs> yes. That was undoubtedly Ray. But I don't know, is she like trying to be sm uh, an ass about this or what? Her blood covered arms raised high, she continued to summon Tora's moaning in a deep, rough voice. Barton tried calling her to her a few times, but it didn't seem like she was listening. When she finally moved her blood smeared lips to speak, Brains. Brains. <laughs> Raiko chan! Oh, of course, Raigo! Nobara chan! I'm gonna eat your brains! Okay, she's just playing! She's just me trying to play a joke! <laughs> oh my god, poor Nobara! Look at her! She's just scared to death! <laughs> And then I'm like, oh my god, what the hell is going on? Before I even got a chance to react to this weird statement, Ray had already thrown herself at me, pressing against pressing me so hard against her soft will and dope chest that my ability to breathe was so temporarily disabled. The moment she finally stopped squeezing my abdominal organs up my chest, I guess guess off for air and watched Barbara try and suffer the same fate as me. Yeah, she was just joking! <laughs> <laughs> Happy Halloween! Ugh. What you doing, Ray? You trying to kill us? Oops! <laughs> okay, so I'm guessing she's a zombie. Realizing she might have gotten a little overboard with her passionate greeting, Ray began scratching the back of her head in embarrassment as Barachan and I slowly recovered from her near death experience. Sorry, sorry! Sorry, sorry! <laughs> Guess I overdid a little there. <laughs> but I'm just so glad you two actually came. To be honest, I was a little worried you wouldn't show up. I mean, when I first asked, you two didn't, you two didn't see you were to come, and you never come to any of my other parties, so... Well, that's the first time for everything. And we promised you we'd come, so... Sure, sure, would have been disappointed if you hadn't shown up, but I hope you didn't have any, half the force cells. I want everyone to have fun after all. I can't have a good. I think I can't think of a good voice for her. I'm just greeting in my normal voice. Well, I still wasn't too thrilled that to actually be here, and would have rather would have rather returned home. But of course, there was no way I could tell her that. I felt a little bad for even thinking that way. But in the end, I just prefer being my, by myself, enjoying my peace and quiet. Big parties with lots of people simply weren't my thing. Nevertheless, I had to admit, seeing Ray so incredibly happy right now did make me feel at least a little glad I had come. Anyways, what did you guys think about my costume, huh? <laughs> so you are a zombie. Her bloodstained hands rustling on her head, she spun around, proudly processing, his, process, pre presenting herself to us from ang every angle. The makeup was actually pretty well done. Maybe a little too well. Do I look horrifying, or do I look horrifying? <laughs> Well, well, judging from her scream, all I can say is that that just scared the hell out of me. <laughs> uh, that's good enough then. <laughs> anyway, speaking of costumes, 
Like a chan. Those ears. Oh my god. They're super cute. Uh, I forgot I had them on. God damn it. Ah, that was right. Those are crushed cat ears. They were still stuck on my top of my head. I totally forgotten about them until now. I didn't think you were the type to wear something like that. <laughs> I know, right? But they do soothe her. Indeed! You look so cute that I could literally hug you to death. Well, you kinda already did it. And not to mention that the mother said that too. Uh, I'd rather you not, thanks. Slow slowly Ray came closer. Please don't. Like a literal soul man, she raised both her hands, fingers easily moving like spider legs. I suddenly felt threatened, but the moment I tried turning around and running for my life. She slammed me against her chest, cutting off my air supply once more. God damn it. Gotcha! <laughs> no getting a break from me! <laughs> I tried wiggling, my, wiggling myself free, but to no avail. My frail body was no match for Ray's strong arms. Only when Bartram mentioned my face turned the same lifeless cover as her makeup, Ray finally let go, sparing me the fate of joining the ranks of the Undead Kitty Army. <laughs> um, Undead Kitty Army. Okay, new thing. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you alright, Raiko chan uh, Yeah, you just almost killed me, but yeah. Apart from feeling all my bones being crushed, that was. Black cat ears, huh? Well, that's not really what I meant when I told you guys to dress up Halloweenishly, but... I thought you're carrying your actual costumes beside your bags and plan to get changed once you're inside, do you? Nah, sorry. We didn't bring any costumes. Aww. Well, I expected as much. But I guess I'll let it slide just this once. Because those seats are so crappy cute, and I'm already super happy you actually came. Especially you, Raiko Nyang. Yeah, I'm totally gonna call you that from now on. Nyan? Because you have the cat ears, remember? Oh my god, the cuteness! Come here, Raiko Nyang! Give Mommy Ray a hug! I had no clue what this... <laughs> this Nyan Nickel Nyan sense was about, but didn't get the time to ponder it. <laughs> really? For the third time within a mere two minutes, Ray seemed me within her arms. And this time she was using such brute strength that it literally felt like she was going to hug me to death. I started to feel a little lightheaded and my vision began to fade, but unfortunately, but fortunately... Hey, don't you kill her now! <laughs> don't worry, I'll be careful not to break her. I want to hug her a million more times tonight, so I can't afford to destroy her yet! As I tried to fill out my flattened lungs with air again, I couldn't help but think it, that it might have been better if she had just destroyed me now. <laughs> I was already feeling like an abused plush toy, and the prospect of this torture continuing over for the rest of the night was... Well... Not very nice. <laughs> Please don't, don't. I really should have stayed home. Miyamoto-san, isn't this how we let our guests inside? I don't know who's talking, so... Who are you? Are you blind melt on freezing in the caress of the cold night? Oh crap, you're right! Sorry guys! Reckon the end of the years was so distracting, I kinda forgot about that! <laughs> Honestly, Miyamoto-san. As the host, you should be more considerate of your guests. Well... That's what you're here for, right? To compensate for your lack of manners? To compensate for your lack of manners? Hey! Speaking of which, I'm ashamed to have forgotten my own. Shimpuku-san, Akadori-san, it's good to see you. The gentle smile of the girl- okay, it's a girl. I couldn't really tell. Cause she didn't- The girl in the blood so blood stained kimono about elegant, elegantly to greet us. Her movements were very precise and refined, just like I had come to expect from her. And I am going to save, but I'll be back with more. See? See ya!